I'm going to throw the bowl with this eight pound ball of clay. That's about what I use to throw a large serving bowl or a bowl that serves as a centerpiece. on center and now I will put it in the hole. Open it up. really see what I'm doing in there, but I'm actually making the curve in the bottom of the bowl. Now at this stage, before the rim gets too thin, I'm going to gently squeeze it and raise it up so that the rim is no longer exactly level or exactly the same thickness all the way around. <clears throat> I do this and it's different on every one I make. Um, I do this because I'm just not into perfect pots anymore. Um, I made them for about 25 years and got bored with it. And I look at all pots all, all over the place all the time and I started noticing the waviness and um, just carefree feeling of the pottery that some others make and I said man I, I want to do that. So here I am messing up a rim. like waves in the ocean, breezes on your cheek. And now you can see where it goes. Maybe you can. Up and down, up and down, a little more. That squeaking is my wheel pedal. start to widen it a little bit. notice that as I'm doing this, I'm looking at the shape of the bowl rather than looking at my hands. Um, if, you look, if I look at my hands, I'll, I don't really see what I'm making. So um, I've been doing this for, been making pots for about 36 years now, and a lot of things 
things are just second nature and I forget to talk about them, but um, that's what I'm doing. Okay. It's almost to a good finished thickness now. And this is a very deep bowl, I could leave it here. And at this stage, I'm going to get rid of the throwing lines that are made by my fingers and try to give it a smoother surface. Take this wooden rib and this rubber rib that bends. Use the curve of the inside with, for this and the outside with this to take out the lines. So I'm pressing down in the center and then I will gradually come up and hold these so that they're kind of like this. I, if I try to do it like this, sometimes this one gets ahead and this one gets ahead or something like that and then the clay has to kind of wind its way through and um, that messes you up every time. So I do it a little bit cockeyed like this and um, that way I know that somewhere these two things are touching. And I kind of start coming out as I do it. And you can see maybe it's getting much smoother down below. are gone and that'll be enough because later on I'm going to put some slip on it and those are just fill in. But I still like the bowl to be wider, shallower, more open and inviting. Get some of the junk out of it. Now this part's pretty tricky um, because I'll use a wooden ruler and start at the top and gradually push out till I think it's about to fall. <laughs> Looks pretty good. The drawback right there doing that is this upper edge usually gets too flat. So I have to hold it up, push some of the clay out so that it gets back into a bowl shape. Almost. It's pretty thin when I do this. Um, bowls are pretty delicate. Okay, now it's for the fun part. I'm going to add the slip. Okay. <laughs> You're funny. There is one thing that I need to do before I add the slip and that's to dry this a little bit. You can see that it's very loose and flimsy and the slip is heavy. It's watered down clay and um, you'll see it in a minute. But before that, I need to dry this a little bit so that it can hold up the slip. Um, I use this Wagner Power heat gun um, and I will, it's pretty noisy, so we're going to turn it off while I do it, but um, turn off the camera while I do it, but it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to get not dry, but a little bit stiff. All right, so here I go. I start out at the edge. That's the thinnest part. 
the one most likely to fall. So I want to get it pretty good and dry. And I'll continue on down inside. I'll do the same thing on the outside. So we'll see you in a minute. Okay, welcome back. It's been about 10 minutes um, that I was drawing both the inside and the outside, mostly where it's thin, up in the top third or so. This part I'm not worried about. But when I put the slip in, sometimes these fall down if you don't dry it a little bit first. And I will dry it after I put the slip in too. Maybe even a little longer. So, it is time to put the slip in. One of the things I did, oh, let me add, one of the things I did after, while I was doing that was raising the places where I had thinned the edge so that now the, this goes up and down considerably more than it did at the beginning. <clears throat> and it's dry enough to stay there instead of just flop back down. Okay, I have a bucket of slip. This is made from uh, dry trimmings of this clay, single rojo. And um, I put the dry trimmings into water, let them dissolve for a while, and then uh, push it through a 40 mesh sieve, sometimes a 60 mesh sieve. Um, depends on how much patience I have. Okay, so all I do here is grab a handful and drop it in the bottom of the bowl. Okay, another handful. Wait, it's a big bowl. I'll do three handfuls. Mm, four handfuls. There you go. Now that should be enough. And it's thick. You can see it. Okay. Now this part is the next part that is, for me, the most fun. Okay, to manipulate the slip, I use this red gooey rubber rib, a big one for a big bowl, a smaller one for a small bowl. They come in different sizes. All right, so turning the wheel at a reasonably slow speed, I start to push the slip. And the first thing I do is try to spread it out on the inside of the bowl, all the way up to the rim. You can see how deep it is down at the bottom. I'm going to move it on up to the, to the rim. And you can see also why I dry it out, because the freshly thrown bowl just wouldn't be able to handle this pressure. I'm not really pressing so much on the clay. Um, I'm trying not to press on it at all, actually. All I'm trying to do is move the slip so with very light pressure I can do all kinds of things with the slip and it's fun. You can see sometimes it spills over the edge and I may do this until I like it. Sometimes that's the first try. Sometimes it's the fifth, the seventh try, but it's fun. Sometimes I'll start at the top and go down. some slip going over the edges. It's got nice texture on the inside. I'm going to change this part right here. It's a little phallic for me. <laughs> okay. Oops.
Not quite. You can see how you get carried away with this. It's just so soft and smooth and push some more more slip up to the top. confusing right in here. Still no. I think I'll keep that. Okay. Okay. You can see why this is mesmerizing and it's so much fun to do. I will let this dry until it's all leather hard. Um, that means I can pick it up without it changing shape. Whoops. And um, turn the bottom of it, turn the foot, which is this section right here on a pot. Um, I turn it over and because the rim is uneven, um, and thin, I usually trim it on a foam bat. This one is for smaller bowls. This one is for bigger bowls, and um, I use them both. Okay. That's about it. Thank you. I hope to see you at the Texas Clay Festival. Come see my work and all the other artists' fabulous stuff. It's amazing, 85 artists from Texas all using the same material and the variety is limitless. Thank you, see you soon. Hello, my name is Benner Barclay. I live and work in San Antonio, Texas. I make functional pottery. I have been doing that for about 36 years and enjoyed every second of it. Um, I will be showing my work along with 80 something other potters at the Texas Clay Festival in Green, Texas this year. It's October 23rd and 24th and it's just an amazing show. Um, anyway, today I'm going to show you how I make a large serving bowl that looks like this, sort of. Um, they're all a little different, but this is about the size. And uh, I'll get started right away. Thank you. <laughs> 